All right, big step for the dump bed build here. Got my hydraulic pump. It's a dual acting pump, Vivor as you can see. Lower end pump, but it's a low end truck. So, um, well, I don't know if you can say that anymore. It's a piece of junk truck that we're seeming to have quite a bit of money tied up in. But besides the fact, this is our hydraulic pump, six quart reservoir, it's cylindrical. It just barely fits behind the seat of this truck. And it's actually, it actually gives me a problem. Um, the two bolts to mount it in the very bottom, the floor of the cab is unlevel. So uh, we're gonna have to figure out, I think we're just gonna run a strap over it. Um, it really can't move much once it's down in there. So um, for steps for installing this, first thing we did is we have a hole there for our return. A hole there for our supply where it's where our hydraulic hoses are going to come in uh, through the back of the cab once we get this all installed um, I'm not going to waste the money on rubber grommets we're just going to silicone those, silicone those holes up so we don't get water penetration into the cab like it really matters that much considering look at the holes in it back here and we self tap and screw the patch so it's not like it's you know in that good a shape anyway if you're installing one of these on something that you really care about maybe you should take a little more care in how you drill holes for your inlet and outlet um, for me and serviceability this thing is going to sit around quite a bit between usages um i would rather not have our cheap pump on the exterior of the vehicle underneath i have thought about mounting it here along the frame rail but jeep trucks sit a little low to the ground so i know for a fact if i put it there the likelihood of knocking it off on a stump or on a rut or something like that would be pretty high um i didn't really want to mount it inside the frame because even at that you're still getting mud and stuff thrown up on the pump probably wouldn't hurt it but it needs to be in a little bit of shelter in my opinion so we're going with inside the cab so um, our supply lines are going to come back, come across this cross member, across this other cross member, down in, and yes, I'm going to tee the two cylinders together. I know that's not optimal, but it's how we're going to do it. Um, and as you can see here, I didn't take into account for the, uh, fittings on this first set of hoses coming off the T, so... That'll probably last us a while. It'll work. Uh, I got to tighten all this up still, but um, I got to go back tomorrow and have them make the other set. I'm going to make sure we take a little bit better measurement there. Um, so uh, as soon as this paint dries, I'll uh, drop the pump in place and run the hoses to it. And uh, we'll show that and show hooking up the supply line and tomorrow after work we should have our other fitting for this cylinder and our other two hoses for this T and uh, we'll be in pretty good shape so I'll update you here in a minute okay, I hooked our pump up here with some uh, jumper cables to a good battery uh, I got my other hose fittings for this end of the cylinders I think we're gonna end up having to have another piece of hose made here i didn't really uh, calculate in you know movement so dummy me so uh, i got those back fittings cracked which should be up so uh, we're gonna hit the button on the pump and try to bleed a little air out of those lines then we'll tighten them up and see if it lifts so. okay We got fluid. All right, I'm gonna tighten these up real quick and I'll get back with you. Okay, I cracked the downside loose and uh, we should get a little fluid out of them now. Uh, here comes a bunch of air.
tighten these puppies up. See what we get here. Uh, probably should move this hammer out of the way. Got all kinds of junk sitting around here. Just uh, not gonna drill into that box. Drill a bit for now. So, all right, let's give it a try. Let's see what it does. We're gonna go up. working. Oop, out of fluid. Well, that's all the higher we can get it right now. Uh, I'm going to need to get some more fluid. But uh, that seemed to work pretty good. Um, let me open the garage door up and uh, I'll see if I can get a video going up and down with it. Going to need a significant amount more hydraulic fluid. Got to get us some more hose. Looks like we need uh, about another foot of hose there. <clears throat> All right, so obviously we need something a little bit more permanent than uh, jumper cables and the cord stretched across the seat so here's what i'm thinking i got this piece of square tubing here uh i'm only doing this really because it's all the metal i have but i'm going to cut a piece of it off and obviously not this whole width it's way too big and the way these dashes are there's a tab here on the bottom ring drill through and bolt so what we're going to do is, is we're going to cut this and probably about four inches wide here. We'll drill the bottom of the dash and we're going to have a power disconnect set up here and we'll have the uh, remote control for the bed hanging here. I want to have a power disconnect that way you're not accidentally hitting the button going down the road. Um, probably just switch it on ground. But uh, so we're going to turn this into a switch mount and we might leave a little bit of extra space on it uh, just in case we would need to add anything in the future so i'll show you doing that we're making this all right got the bracket cleaned up there got it painted sitting over here by the stove to dry after that dries we'll get it mounted to the dash and then we'll remount our electric switch in there so I'm going to get a little wood and then uh, we'll make our first cable up. Okay, running our wires for this. Obviously, the battery stay is right here in the factory position. Um, at this point in time, I would like to try to run this with a one battery setup still. Um, if we end up and need to add a second battery we will tackle that when the time comes so at this moment um, I would like to go back across the inner fender well and stay as far away with the exhaust as I can or from the exhaust as I can and come through behind the dash on the passenger side um, so let's go inside and look in there and see where a man might be able to sneak a hole through okay so here we are under the dash on the passenger side and i would like to be somewhere just underneath right here where the heater box is um and it looks like we already have a hole here but 
it's over uh, behind the engine and the edge of the transmission tunnel and I'm afraid I can't really see through there I'm afraid that's gonna get us too close to the exhaust manifold so I'm gonna poke something through that hole and see where it comes out at. Um, if it is then we're probably gonna come through somewhere right here in the edge of this rubber um, let me poke something through here and see where that comes out at <clears throat> all right I got us a hole punched through there below the heater box did not hit the heater box um, so I sprayed a little paint on it there let that dry and uh, uh, I mean it probably should buy a grommet to put in that but uh, we'll wrap it with a little extra electrical tape and paint it real good and put some silicone on it because I'm not spending money on grommets um, and we'll probably fill this hole while we're in here so all right and I think that hole might be big enough we can get both wires through if not we might have to poke another hole beside of it or drill that one out just a little bit bigger <clears throat> all right looks like I guesstimated about right wire come out directly beneath the heater box so we'll go ahead and pull it through and we're going to route it right here against the firewall and we're going to go ahead and hook it to our positive battery terminal I painted that red so i know that's the positive one so all right get this hooked up here real fast all right, there's our positive connection painted, taped up, and connected. So, uh, now we're going to start on the negative side, which is going to be our switch side. Um, I'm weird. I like switching on the ground. I personally think it's better. People argue about that. Especially on a situation here where you're running power into the cab anyway. But I just I prefer to run the ground. That's just the way I am. Anywho... We're going to uh, make up our next cable end, and uh, then we're going to be a kind of a standstill until our switch plate gets done drying for paint. All right, I got the wiring done. Instead of trying to show you step by step, I just decided I'd do it and then show you what I did. So we have our negative cable coming back to the battery. Uh, positive cable coming back to the battery. Like I said earlier, we're going to run a one battery setup and see if we can get away with it. Uh, I'm going to paint these red since everything is black here. Um, then coming on around the inside of the cab, came through the firewall, put a good bit of tape on that um, so it won't rub through. Uh, kind of came through here and got fancy decided to keep the wiring fairly neat and then uh, I already showed you the connections back on the pump so here's our bracket uh, I'm kind of happy with how it turned out yeah we'll see it'll work I'll get some labels in here for it but uh, let's go ahead and kick this power on I'm not a huge fan of that switch but it was the cheapest thing they had make sure you ain't got nothing sitting back there and we'll hit her up button. So, that's not quite full dump angle. Oh, I added in an extra 18 inches of hose here, which, you know, that 18 inches of hose didn't cost shit, but basically doubled the cost of that whole return line because I had to buy two more fittings because I got dumb yesterday and uh, just measured to where the cylinders were down, didn't and take in cylinder travel. So let's run this the rest of the way up. We should have a little bit more travel. Oh, are we hitting anything up there? No. Okay. I believe we just ran out of fluid. And 
that's what we got. So let's go back here to our hinges and see if we have any more tilt to come out of that. And a man could go just a hair more on that. But uh, that's getting to be a pretty steep, steep dump angle there. Um, you might get, like I said, there's about a half inch there. We'll get a little bit more angle out of it. Let me open the garage door up and you can see a little bit better um, visual of how steep our angle is. There's a view out the side door of the garage. That's a pretty decent dump angle. It's not going to go straight vertical. And I knew that from the beginning. But uh, I'm happy with that. And uh, maybe I'll do a, another video whenever I get a little more hydraulic fluid. And get that extra little bit. It's not going to be much. But I'm very content and happy with that. So. Here we are. Uh, let's see what it'll do with a fat person standing on it. pretty good for a cobbled together hydraulic system.